Okay, it's Saturday night, April 2nd, and I just got thinking all day today. Uh, thinking about God, thinking about my life, thinking about this, thinking about that. You know, just contemplating. And what I'm going to talk about tonight are miracles. Now, miracles are... Uh, again opinions you know everybody's got their own opinion as to what exactly a miracle is but in my life I've had a few that I consider totally God doing in his will and uh, involving me in, in it prior to uh, when I was home, I remember being uh, probably eight, nine years old. I was in uh, Cub Scouts. We were supposed to go fishing over the Ladder Brook. And boy, it looked like it was going to rain. It was rain clouds and just miserable. And I wanted to go. And I'm sitting in the living room. TV is off. I had no distractions and I said a little prayer Lord I want to go fishing over the ladder brook but they're gonna not go if it's gonna rain so can you just clear up the skies within minutes Blue skies, horizon to horizon, sun shining bright, 75 degrees. We went fishing. I never thanked God for doing that. Didn't even cross my mind. Years later, I recall. Grandpa, Chuck, the day that Mom took me down there. I wouldn't say it was a miracle. I wouldn't say it was just God answering Chuck's prayer. Because Chuck passed shortly after I left. I don't know how long after. I know it was just a matter of weeks. But what Kathy told me in the kitchen first time that Chuck has smiled in over five years. I made him happy. And then it dawned on me. He must have made a deal with God. And Mom and I talked about it on the way home. You know, I told Mom what Kathy said. Mom just didn't say anything, just just absorbed it like she always did. I wish I had mom's memories. I wish I knew what she was talking about. I talked to Corrine Luce. She's uh, one of my friends on Facebook. I mean, uh, I guess she's watching these videos. Even in my Antichrist 22 and a half years, mom had nothing bad to say about me. Even though I did hurt her. And I hurt her real bad. When I told her that that's God's property. I don't have nothing to do with your God. That had to hurt her. But mom never accepted that. She continued And uh, in my Marine Corps career, I told you about that time that all that gas went in me. I consider that a miracle of God. There was no burns. There was no nothing. Nothing. And like I said, I think Chuck told God 
don't hurt my grandson. And like I said, I'll find out about that when I go to heaven. The uh, divorce. Told you in the month of February I had to pay 2700 or 2900 I can't recall the exact amount. I think it was 2700 But I was only bringing in 1700 Three months earlier, Pam and the kids left. Three months after they left, I got back into church. February, I had to shell out $2,700. Uh, I was only bringing in 17, 1650 of it. Remember, I had the, those four credit cards I had to pay off. Uh, house payment, gas, water, electric. Food was, luckily I ate at the hospital. And I worked the midnight shift. So, I ate, well, put it this way, I raided the refrigerator every night and put stuff in my car. In other words, I stole food from the hospital. But I had to survive. That was the only way I could. You know, even though it was wrong, I had to survive. But uh, that hospital opened up my eyes too. Especially with Ron's dad when he checked out and that ordeal that I went into detail detail with. But anyways, I had to pay everything month of February. <clears throat> well, January 31st, I sat down with my checkbook and there it was. <laughs> I had under a hundred dollars in checking account. I made a prayer, Lord, I'm going to make out all the checks, put them in the envelopes and mail them tomorrow. You know my situation? Whatever happens, happens. I'm just going to mail them out and trust you. Next morning, or that evening at midnight, I swung by the post office through the nine letters into the post office and went to work. Mail that month was nothing. I did not receive anything. The end of February, last day of February, I decided to walk to the bank. So I walked to the bank. It was about one o'clock in the afternoon. I had six dollars and twenty-four cents in my checking account. I asked them to give me a list of the checks to clear. They ran off the thing for the last since it started. And the woman looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and, at it and she just gave it to me. But she had that look of I can't believe what I'm looking at look. Well I took it home and I matched what was on the piece of paper to my checkbook. Every check cleared. And what I did in my checkbook, I filled it out like you're supposed to, except I did not subtract. I just made a big X. You know, where you're supposed to subtract and then put the new total and then subtract and put the new total and then subtract to make sure you got money to cover the check. I didn't do that. I just wrote the checks. Because I knew on $1,700, $1,650 of it going, and within 120 days, I'm going to shell out $2,700 on a $1,700 income, knowing $1,650 is going for bills. 
there's no way those checks are going to clear. So I just made an X. Well, I took the checkbook. I put 624 to the good and started building on the 624. From that time on, did it, did it, new total, new total, new total, and I lived like that. If I didn't need it, I didn't spend it. Well, being a bachelor, mom and dad came down. And while I was at work, that time I was working days, because I became the supervisor of the hospital. Well, mom decided to pick up my checkbook because it was on the desk in uh, Corey's room. It was on the desk. So I came home. Mom was out on the patio. She called me over, went over and sat down. And she goes, I want you to explain this to me. And I said, what? And she handed me my checkbook. Now this is April. You know, February was two months ago. And I said, that's my checkbook. What are you doing looking at my checkbook? And she goes, you have to explain it. And I says, I don't have to explain nothing. It's my checkbook. And she opened up my checkbook and she goes, what's this X? And I told her, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's a miracle. What happened, Jean? And I says, Mom, I had to pay out $2,700 court ordered. I made out the checks on the 31st. Said a prayer before I made them out. Told God to make it work. Or asked God to make it work. And I mailed them off on the way to work. And uh, the end of February, I went to the bank. And started out with 624, and that's what I've been using. And I was doing it right. It's all right. Well, Mom went to the bank the next morning while I was at work. And uh, she talked to the bank manager. Naturally, I kept the pieces of paper. Well, the bank manager looked at it and apparently gave Mom the same look that the bank teller gave me when she first looked at it. This is impossible. This cannot happen. He's over $1,200 overdrawn. There's no way those checks could have cleared. But the bank says that they cleared. We can't explain it. But right there it is, black and white. Every check cleared. Well, Mom and Dad opened up a $1,500 account at the bank and told me, gave me instructions that if I ever run into a situation where I needed money to call them and let them know that I'm taking taking 100 or whatever. I never had to touch that 1500 Mom got a letter from the bank because of inactivity on that account. So every once in a while, you know, I just go down and put some money in it. You know, <laughs> Put a $5 in it, you know, you know, something to generate usage. Uh, years later, uh, when I was in Monk's Corner, I had a uh, car situation. And uh, mom and dad ran down, closed out the bank account, came back and put $1,500 towards a car that I bought. So my payments be cheaper because, uh, like Dad said, you know, hey, we spent that money. <laughs> Back in 1991, and here it is, what, 20, 2004, you know. <laughs> okay, so that's a miracle. And... Uh, yeah, there's been a, a couple small things that's happened. Now let's get to another major thing that happened. Was uh, hearing Chuck's voice the day I walked to the altar 
for the first time after I got back into church after Chuck died. Just as clear as I'm talking to you, Chuck talked to me. I recognized his voice. I felt his arm on my around holding on my shoulder as I'm kneeling there, praying, talking to Chuck. Chuck's talking to me. We stayed there for about a half hour, just talking. And it was real. That afternoon, I was telling Mom about it. And Mom, like I said earlier, you know, she confided in me that there's times that she feels Chuck's present there, too. Well, let's talk about the last major miracle. When Mom told me on the phone that she talked to Jesus and asked Jesus to keep her alive until I got home. And I was home for six days and she was still alive. It dawned on me that she still had one more thing to tell me. She was done with Debbie, she was done with Tom, she was done with Mark, she was done with Deb, uh, Dad. But she had one more thing to tell Jean. Now, I don't consider myself the favorite son. I don't consider myself anything other than the worst Christian in the world, the black sheep of the family. Sorry, Kareen. I am the black sheep of the family. <laughs> I've said that my whole life. Even though mom disagrees with me and you disagree with me, hey, I'm the black sheep of the family. Just like Molly says that she's the black sheep of her family. You know, it's the same thing. You know, just the way we feel, the way we are. But she had that one more thing to tell me. And that Sunday morning, right in front of Debbie and Dad, when I told mom, turn around, talk to Jesus, end this thing today. What happened? Matt shows up. And I already told you the story. My eyes turned red and all this stuff happened to my face when Matt told me what happened. I wanted to kill my sister, naturally. What right does she have to interfere? None. None at all. None. I still get, I haven't forgiven yet. I try. I've prayed about it. I've talked to God about it. But I can't. That's what I mean about being the worst Christian in the world. There's things in my life that I cannot forget. That I cannot wash over. And that's a major situation with me right now. So if you want to, pray for me. <laughs> but will it do any good? I don't know. I'm hoping it does. I'm hoping I can forgive my sister. I hope I can go up to my sister someday and give her a hug and tell her I love her. I do love her. Hate what she's done. But she's my sister. Would I defend her? Yes. Have I defended her in the past? Yes. Do I like what she has done? No. But then again, God says the same thing about this human being. He loves me. But he doesn't like what I do. Or the way I think. But he accepts it. So anyways... That Monday, after uh, Mom passed, and I went to Hillcrest Baptist Church as I'm talking to the pastor. I told the pastor that I had to go inside. Because I had to talk to my mom. And Chuck. He remembers Mom telling him that story about Chuck. When I got to the altar, Chuck was with me. I felt his presence as soon as I took my shoes off. 
as I was kneeling down with Chuck's arm going around here, my mom kissed me. Right there. And knelt down right next to me, by my right hand side. Her arm going around my waist, just like she always liked when we go for walks. My arm would be up around her shoulder, her arm would be right around my waist, holding on to my side. We stayed there for about an hour. Chuck on one side, Mama on the other, and we talked. I heard them and I heard Jesus. Why am I the Christian I believe I am? Why do I feel like I'm the worst Christian in the world? Because I am. But I'm not afraid. I know what's waiting. And I'm looking forward to it. And every morning, during the day and at night, I pray to God to take me home. I asked Mom and Chuck to talk to Jesus, to take me home. Knowing full well he's not going to do it because he's not done with this thing yet. Not on this earth. Am I of the earth? Yes. Am I in the earth? No. Anyway, I just wanted to brief you guys. There's another little small miracle. The uh, cemetery where they placed mom. Her uh, uh, stand, I was told, was not going to be there for a long time. Oh, right there it is. Right there it is. They said that uh, Because of <clears throat> the way they do it, it usually takes three or four months for that rock to be carved out and placed up. But it didn't. It was days. I was the first one to see it. And they must have just put it up that morning because the previous day it wasn't there because I went every day. Is that a miracle? I think it is. A small one. It went against their normal, well, we'll get it up there in about three months. Sorry, I wasn't home for three months. Not after mom died, not after what dad put me through, not after what my sister put me through. I wasn't there. As Soon as my driver's license came in and that motorcycle got inspected, I was gone. Had to. For me. Had to get away. Sure, I could have stayed. But I think my blood pressure would have boom, just like it did in Buford. But anyways, that's it in a nutshell. Those things there are major miracles <clears throat> in my life where God could where God just took control and I'm going to shut this off right after we say a little prayer Lord once again thank you thank you for this day thank you for this time thank you for the food that you've given me to make me stronger for you Mom, Chuck, 
once again talk to Jesus and Jesus bring me home I'm willing to do your will but I'm also tired and I ask all these things in your name Amen okay you guys have a good day God bless